Okay, so Microsoft just launched their AI tool for Office. And this title might be a little clickbaity, but it is it is definitely an uh, evolution of ChatGPT. And in this video, I want to kind of talk about that and talk about some of the implications, not necessarily from a technology and a tool perspective, but about how I think this can improve your process if you're trying to do a business work on sort of evolve in the way that you think about producing content. And that's basically my goal with some of these generative AI type uh, conversations that I'm, that I'm kind of putting out there. So, so with that, I'll switch over. I'll give you the highlights about what it is that Microsoft is trying to accomplish. I'll give you my thoughts about it. And also once I do that, I'll show you some of the things that I think you should at least pay attention to. And then we'll kind of go from there. Thanks. Okay, so I figured before I go into this whole Microsoft Copilot thing, I want to make sure that everybody kind of understands what is the purpose of this whole Copilot. And because it's interesting because Microsoft is actually reusing what, what I would consider a popular brand, right? Microsoft tends to do this. Like if a software or a brand or something gains some level of traction, then they try to spread that brand to every single tool and that's kind of what they're doing here so the actual the true original copilot is an actual tool so i'm going to make this up here i'm going to say a test copilot t right and and then open up a file i'll, I'll open up visual studio um, a coding editor sorry okay i'll show you what i mean so so i have copilot installed on my actual computer itself and i'm going to tell it i'm going to say um so just an index HTML, okay, and then really, okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna do this. Um, create, right? Okay, so there, Copilot just launch, right? And also it's on the side panel here, so that's a Copilot here, okay. So now I'm gonna say um, generate. So I'm just doing a HTML here. Uh, so I'm gonna say generate. HTML uh, page um, co uh, concept page outline page let's just go to page okay then I'll press enter okay so now it's it's kind of <laughs> making me do it one one thing at a time right so there we go um, so you see, see what it's doing. It's just basically kind of, I haven't actually typed a single line of code. It's just figuring it out and it's just allowing me, it's just generating code on the fly. Oops. There. So I'm pressing tab I press enter and I'm pressing tab because it's figuring out what it needs to do. And then there, it just, it just did that. So if I actually just went live with this, then it will, uh, it will show whatever that content. So that's crazy no lines of code didn't write a single line so that's what copilot is i use this every single day in fact i pay for it now because it's so good so now i can come and create a html sorry a javascript file i don't know um chat uh what would i say so i would say chart dot js let's just say and then i would say in here chart the graph a bar chart that shows the weather for the week okay i've never done this before i don't even know what it's going to do but look at this right so now interesting enough it's not generating the entire code it's just doing it piece by piece right so i have to kind of do this but it's, it's eventually it'll just get bolder and it'll just keep it's like okay i know what you're doing so i'm just gonna just keep thing and now sometimes I think I, I might have I've noticed since of recently it's doing this type of stuff where it's like it's pushing me to do line by line but I think there's a setting that I could enable to let it kind of go a little more the point is this right I have not written a single line of code in fact I don't even know how to write a chart library properly okay and um, this is this is doing this for me just almost automatically so I guess the question is there's another way for me to en enable the whole thing, but you get the idea. And that's the only point that I want to make. So the point is that's what Copilot is. It's a artificial intelligence tools that runs in the background that allows you to kind of 
populate content at scale. I, I don't know why it's just doing it piece by piece, but anyway, that's besides the point. Sometimes it'll do an entire paragraph of code, basically. All right, so now that you got some kind of idea on what Copilot is from a coding standpoint, and this tool has been around, the Copilot tool has been around for about two years now. Um, I've been using it for about a year or so, and it's gotten significantly better. Um, my subscription recently got canceled because I got a GitHub corporate account and local account and something happened. And when it did, for some reason, it's only giving me line by line after that, which is a little annoying because normally it would give me a whole paragraph of code before. The point is, underneath the hood, underneath the hood, uh, Copilot is using, I'm going to forget the model name. It doesn't really matter what the model name is. The point is it's actually using a version of ChatGPT in the background, like deep, deep under the covers. They've been working on this for quite a while because in ChatGPT, you could actually go and ask ChatGPT to write code. And I think I have a video I'm going to put out on that as well too. But more importantly, for this particular video, what I want to do is kind of just zoom in specifically on the office sort of focus with adding sort of this co-pilot type of application and then sort of address what it really means for you if you're an office user or maybe you're not an office user, but this might be a compelling reason to actually evaluate it, right? So first of all, like I said, it's all of the different office suites. So they, they are very serious about integrating this into every single piece of software. In fact, this is a what I would consider a paradigm shift in the way that we're going to be thinking about software, because no longer are you going to be required to know how to do the tasks. You just will need to know what to do or not even know what to do, but your intent of what you would like to do. And you will have the artificial intelligence sort of help you with that content. And that's a big paradigm shift, right? So in other words, we've moved from you in the olden days where you had to type in every single command to and knowing every single command to a place where you have basically screens where you have menus that you could say, I would like to view the file or insert something or home menu, right? So more of a point and click type of deal to obviously touch on the mobile and stuff like that to now, I don't even have to remember that for me to insert a picture, it's on the insert menu. I could just say, I'd like to insert a picture, just type it out. And the next thing, the obvious thing that's coming to that is once this gets right, it's going to be voice input. So I could just say, hey, I would like to create a PowerPoint presentation for my X business that focuses on XYZ and have it just create the whole PowerPoint and then tell it to adjust it to Cardin. That's coming. In fact, we're probably about a year, maybe less than that from that type of stuff. So this is a really big deal. And it's not a gimmick anymore, or at least it, we're still in the draft format of it, but it's definitely moving at a rapid pace. And so anyway, so that's the goal here. Now to be a hundred percent, well, not a hundred percent accurate, but closer to accuracy, it's not actually chat GPT, right? So what the way how Microsoft is doing this is that whenever you type something inside of here, right? So you say type, um, create me a PowerPoint presentation. What they're doing is they're sending it their version of this co-pilot type of thing. And all this is, it's just a fancy way of saying it has access to your data in Microsoft Office context. And what it's going to do is going to go out sort of like to the, to the, to the, model in our words chat gpt a version of it and it's going to get that data and then it's going to kind of combine that data with your own personal information so that it gives you something that's accurate and closer to you right so in other words it's not giving you some random stuff that's on the internet which is what chat gpt generally would do it's very hyper focused and very hyper tailored towards information that you already have in the system so if you're a if you're an electrical company and you're doing electrical work and you did presentations to do proposal and they will show you electrical stuff. If you are a marketer and you do marketing content, it'll show you, right? So that's the idea. So the goal is to really, really hyper-focus the artificial intelligence, AKA ChatGPT, closer to the work that you're actually doing as a professional or novice or student or whatever it is, right? That's the idea. And that's what I wanted to kind of make sure that you understand in this. So how does it work and what is it that they're actually trying to do? Number one is 
they are so for example if i'm trying to sign an email this is outlook nobody uses outlook but you know there's people out there that uses outlook in the business sense right so i'm trying to send an email and what they've done is they've given you this window this window and you could just kind of type in what you want so this is just the and then you click an insert right so there's a before this there was a box that you could actually type in exactly what is it that you're looking for and then um and then from there it would just kind of it would just insert it into the message and or you could say a regenerate uh not a description and it'll do that right it'll just keep generating content the one that's most exciting for me actually well second maybe to 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 teams which i'll talk about in a bit is 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 PowerPoint and the reason why I do PowerPoints every single week and uh, uh, honestly PowerPoint is I wouldn't say it's my favorite tool but it's definitely my favorite way of conveying ideas now that's ironic because I'm actually using OneNote to do what I generally would do in PowerPoint but the truth is I, I like these videos are not necessarily in my opinion designed to be like presentation wise so I don't I don't think of it as a presentation per se however um, I've been using one feature very specifically in in PowerPoint and I'll just show you very quickly it's a, it's called the early primitive version of of it a, of this PowerPoint so if you notice on the right hand side here there's this co-pilot thing so this is the thing that I normally do every single week okay, I come in here I put a title and I say I'm gonna be um, showing how how AI works right the future of AI And then I'll create a new slide, and then I'm going to say um, why AI. Okay, and then so I'm going to say what is. Oh my God! What? What is Chat GPT? Um, what is Copilot? what is mid mid journey mid journey is another ai tool or whatever and then i do this i come here and i click on design and i click on designer every week and it gives me some ideas and i'm like mm, these looks too basic uh this one right it's okay it's not necessarily the best but it just allows me to put some styling onto it or i do this right and then I move on to the next slide I do that every single week so or or I'll go on the internet as an example I'll just say um, AI images I'll go here as an example I don't know who these images are hopefully I'm not stealing copyright material right I will copy image I'll paste it in here so I'll put a title the future right I'll get rid of this I'll paste it in here and then I'll come back into chat picture designer click on designer and then I'll do that that that's what I do all the time so this is a really big deal so this is an evolution of that so what you can do now is you can describe exactly what so you can say hey in, in this particular version she gives sort of a outline that allows her to she's doing a school presentation and she's doing it for a graduation blah 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 based on her daughter's very specific uh, very specific her daughter's um, uh, graduation and with that it's able to generate like a 10 point slide on that which is pretty impressive right and now you could kind of come in and kind of change things up and edit it or tell it to redo a specific slide or add an image right so it gives you some options here so it's not like you totally have to come up with this stuff on your own it gives you options um one note same exact same thing help me plan for trish's graduation or whatever it is uh, graduation party and does the exact same thing and then with OneNote as you can see I'm using OneNote right now I use OneNote religiously for all kinds of stuff so with that it'll help her to plan sort of all the different itineraries for the party etc etc Microsoft Word this is definitely a really big deal right where you can write give it some content tell it what you're trying to write exactly what you would do in chat gpt except that you're doing it in this tool here and have it generate an entire paragraph all together right so you get the idea the exact same thing with with excel you can also do that with excel in itself 
put all that content, basically have it generated, etc. And Teams, now I use a tool which I put a video out already on that's called Read AI that does summarization of meetings. And this is now going to bring summarization of meeting directly into Teams. I'm a diehard Teams fan. I'm a big fan of it. It's very slow. It's clunky. Yes, I agree with you and all that stuff. However, Teams has some very, very specific values. And you'll see me putting out some videos specifically around that. The last but not least, and definitely not the least here, is automation. So in case you don't know much about automation, I'm going to try to do a, quite a few videos on this topic because I've been leveraging automation a lot. In fact, one of the automated things that I want to do specifically around this video, these videos that I'm putting out is automate the process of putting it up onto YouTube. I have, I'm not there as yet, but I will do a video on it. So, but the idea of being able to come in and describe exactly sort of the automation that you wanted, let me give you an example. I would like to write an automation, let's say that whenever I receive an email from Harry, that you take the subject, extract the attachments and put it into Excel and link to the attachment. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. And then categorize the email, right? So do you have a, a Excel with all of John's email or whoever email with all of the attachments? I'm not saying that that's useful. I'm just giving you a scenario in where you might use that. Or you could do something a little bit better. Say, for example, whenever I upload a file to OneDrive or I add a file on OneDrive, send a link to, on a, let's say on a specific folder, send a link notification to an email to Peter given him access to that file, something like that, right? Like you get the idea. The point is you can do automation, but in order for you to do, you have to kind of understand each and every one of the tools. What this is going to do is going to democratize this idea that you could do automation without knowing code. And that is a really, really big deal. So there, what it'll do is once you give it sort of the idea, so if you see, for example, here, create a private Teams channel in customer service um, when urgent issues from a particular customer is receive, add an account, add the account to Teams, right? And it gives you exactly the steps, get contacts from Salesforce, get profile, his my his profile, etc., etc. And it keeps going through and it'll give you the suggestion. So this is a really, really big deal. In fact, if every single thing else was gimmicky to you, you should not be taking this specific thing seriously. Um, there's quite a few automation tools that are out there. Microsoft has their own version. It's called Flow. I don't use Flow because I use the more quote unquote professional version of it. It's the exact same tool. It's just that it's more in an enterprise level setting, but it has a lot of power. I'm going to try to do a few more videos specifically on this just to kind of educate you guys on it and educate myself, frankly, but it's a really, really, really powerful tool. So the, what, what is the summary and what's the takeaway from this video? The takeaway is that the, the concept and the, the, the shift of the way that we work and the things that we can do to be prepared for a meeting, to convey our ideas and our thought process around a specific topic is going to dramatically change. What I, I would consider, I would classify it as we were doing sort of the primitive caveman manual way of doing things where we had to like light your own fire and doing all that kind of stuff too. Now you have sort of a stove where you just turn on the burner, right? Like you just you don't even think about how do I get a fire because you don't need it. You just turn on the burner and, and on your stove, right? And that's it. So th that's that's what it is. It's, it's just giving you tools that you can do things faster. Therefore, you can cook food faster. In fact, I will even argue that this is not even turning on the burner. This is like pressing the button on Uber Eats, right? Like these. That's my that's my thought process. So anyway, hopefully, this giving you some value and some insight on this tool. I think it's fascinating. Now the thing about it is that they have not. I announced at least in any of the videos that I've seen when it's actually coming out. And I think that's, I think they're, they're trying to, th this is a lot of marketing stuff. We'll see how it actually happens in, in real life, but, but stay tuned for that. So when it actually gets launched and I get access to it, I'm going to put out a video specifically around it. Thank you.